We previously compared the 2018 Mac Mini to the iMac 5K and concluded that the Mac Mini is a great option for users who don't really need best-in-class graphics performance, like photo editors for example. The Mac Mini doesn't pack a dedicated graphics card and it definitely lags behind the iMac 5K, which comes with a Radeon Pro GPU. However, the Mac Mini does support four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which means you can easily connect an eGPU or external graphics card. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're connecting a powerful $400 Radeon RX Vega 64 graphics card to the new Mac Mini using a $250 Sonnet 550W eGPU enclosure, which can also provide 87 watts of charging if you decide to use it with a MacBook. Our Mac Mini comes upgraded with an Intel Core i7 processor and 512 gigabytes of storage. Instead of upgrading the RAM to 32 gigabytes for $600 through Apple, we purchased a 32 gigabyte kit for only $200 and swapped it out ourselves, bringing the total price to $1,700. If you'd like to learn how to swap out the RAM yourself, you can click the card above to see our step-by-step -step guide. Now, if we add in the price of the Vegas 64 eGPU, that brings the total price of our setup to $2,350, and that doesn't include a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. So if you have to buy all those as well, you're nearing the price of a similarly spec'd iMac 5K. But let's say you're switching from a PC to a Mac and already have a mouse, keyboard, monitor, and maybe even an AMD graphics card. Buying a Mac Mini instead of an iMac is going to make a lot of sense for you. If the Vegas 64 is too much power for you, you can get away with the $200 RX 580 graphics card and the $200 350W Sonnet eGPU enclosure instead, bringing the total price to $2,100. Realistically, you can also save a good amount of cash on the Mac Mini by getting less storage, less RAM, or maybe just the i5 processor instead if you don't need that much processing power. Setting up the eGPU was really easy. Just drop the card into the PCIe slot, insert the power connectors, plug it into the wall, and connect it to the Mac Mini's Thunderbolt 3 port. The Mac should instantly recognize the eGPU and automatically start using it for graphics rendering. The downside to using eGPUs is that it isn't as efficient as having an internal graphics card. We're going to see how well it performs compared to the Radeon Pro 580 in the iMac 5K and the Vega 56 in the base iMac Pro, which are both less powerful than the Vega in our eGPU. Looking at raw performance in Geekbench 4's metal test, the Mac Mini with Vega 64 scored similarly to the iMac Pro with the Vega 56 card, but quite a bit less than the iMac Pro with the same Vega 64 GPU. But compared to the Mac Mini by itself, that difference in graphics performance is incredible. Just because it scores as well as the base iMac Pro's graphics, that doesn't mean it'll run as smoothly in the real world. Let's run some video editing tests in Final Cut Pro 10 and see how it performs. Before we do that, here are the differences in processor performance. As you can see, the Mac Mini is more powerful than the iMac 5K, but less powerful than the base iMac Pro. Starting with the Bruce X Final Cut Pro benchmark, the Mac Mini is right up there with the iMac Pro and even faster than the iMac 5K. Compared to the Mac Mini by itself, you're getting some really good performance. Now, stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip, the Mac Mini is actually slower than both the iMac Pro and the iMac 5K, but of course, over three and a half times faster than the Mac Mini alone. We think it's slower than the iMac because of inefficiencies that go hand in hand with using an eGPU. Exporting a 5 minute 4K project, the Vega 64 helps the Mac Mini finish over twice as fast as the stock Mini, but it's unfortunately still slower than the iMac, which is surprising since the Mac Mini's processor and eGPU are both more powerful than what comes in the top spec iMac 5K. You definitely lose performance by using an eGPU compared to an internal card. Moving on to a 5 minute 4.5K Red Raw project, the Mac Mini actually outperforms the iMac 5K, and that's because Red Raw is extremely processor intensive. Since the Mac Mini's processor is faster, it finishes quicker than the iMac 5K. Finally, exporting a 60p Canon Raw Lite project, which is less processor intensive than Red Raw, the Mac Mini is yet again slower than the other two. However, it was able to play back the project at 52 frames per second compared to only 45 on the iMac 5K. The iMac Pro, of course, played back at the full 60 frames per second. One very interesting thing we found is that we were only getting around 22 frames per second in the Canon RAW project when we had the display plugged into the Mac Mini instead of into the eGPU. So always make sure your display is plugged into the eGPU instead of into the Mac Mini. If you already own a 2018 Mac Mini, getting an eGPU can really boost graphics performance. But if you're trying to choose between the Mac Mini and the iMac 5K, just go with the iMac. 
It performed better in almost every test even though the processor and graphics card aren't as powerful, and you get the beautiful 5K display as well. On top of that, we experienced issues with the eGPU, where it would sometimes randomly disconnect and leave you with a black screen, so the all-in-one iMac 5K is definitely a more reliable solution as well. And of course, the iMac Pro flew through every single test, and it's got a whole lot more to like compared to the other two machines. You can hear all about it in our one-year iMac Pro review. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.